maybe I think you have an indication this morning. Yes, uh, let us uh, back here, please. Dear Father, dear God of mercy, we are thankful for the gift of life that you give us and the opportunity to serve the people of Wayne County. Father, I ask that you might help us to act with character and conviction. And Father, help us to listen with understanding and goodwill. Help us to speak with charity and with strength. Give us a spirit of service. Remind us that we are stewards of your authority. Father, we're also grateful today for our military, all of our law enforcement and first responders that keep us and our property safe each and every day. Father, today I'd like to ask a special time, have a special time of thought this morning for the many family, friends, and relatives and some county commissioners, elected officials throughout our country, but here in Wayne County in particular, that are dealing with health issues this morning. Father, we ask that you might intervene, that we know that you're the great physician. And Father, we know that your will will be done in each and every case. I ask, Father, that you touch each individual that we know that have health problems today that are dealing with these diseases that are attacking our society. We ask, Father, that you might would touch each and every one today. And if it be your will, to heal them 100%. Father, we're again, we're grateful for serving as an elected official in this county for the citizens of Wayne County. These things I ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, General. Has everybody had an opportunity to read the minutes? If so, are there any corrections? Motion to approve the minutes. So moved. We have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Okay, moving into discussion adjustment agenda, Mr. Honeycutt. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, at this time, we would like to uh, remove number two under unfinished business uh, to discuss the EMS stations uh, for a later time. Are there any other adjustments from the commissioners? Okay, the motion to approve the adjustment, I mean the agenda as it is. So, and motion on the floor, is any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Okay, we'll move right on into public comments. You've got, um, anyone can come up to the podium and speak for four minutes if you give us your name, your phone number, your address, and public comments is open. Okay. Nobody's interested, we'll close it. Thank you. Okay, appointment committee. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Bear with me. We've got a, a few this morning. We'd like to recommend the appointment of Miss Debbie Harris to the Wayne Community College Board of Trustees. And I put this in form of motion. There's a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. I'd like to recommend the reappointment of Ms. Shirley Edwards to the Wayne County Library Board of Advisors. I'll put this for a motion. Motion on floor. Is there any discussion? <laughs> you want me to read your motion? I'll listen. Please raise your right hand. Yeah. I'd like to recommend the appointment of Gene Smith to the Wayne County Library Board of Advisors. I'll put this for a motion. Motion on floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. I'd like to recommend the appointments of John Best. Ken Gerard, Harold Brashear to the Wayne Health Corporation, effective immediately. I'd like to put this in form of motion. Question on floor is any discussion? All uh, those favor, please raise your right hand. I'd like to recommend the appointment of Dr. Linzaris to the Wayne Health Corp, effective January 1, 2019. I'll put this in form of motion. Question on floor is any discussion? All those favor, please raise your right hand. I'd like to recommend the appointment of Scott Ingram to the Southern Wayne Sanitary District. I'll put this for a motion. Motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. 
We'd like to recommend the appointment of Mr. Irvin Watts as chairman of the Wayne County ABC Board. And I put this for a motion. Is there a motion on the floor? Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We'd like to recommend the appointment of Betty Benton and George Bogan to the Wayne County Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee. I put this for a motion. There's a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. I'd like to recommend the appointment of Elba Gutierrez to the Wayne County Tourism Development Authority, and I'll put this form in motion. There's a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. We'd like to recommend the appointment of Patrick B. Nunn to the Indian Springs Volunteer Fire Department Fire Commission. I'll right, put this form in motion. Motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. We'd like to recommend the appointment of Brandon Gray, Greg Ricker, Chad Coker, Blair Tindall, Paul King, and Daryl Coley to the Wayne Executive Jet Pool Commission. I put this for a motion. As a motion on the floor, is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. And I'd like to make a motion to appoint Greg Ricker as chairman of the Wayne Executive Jet Pool Commission. I put this for a motion. Motion on the floor, is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. That concludes. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay, at this, at this point, we will recess the Board of Commissioners meeting, and we need to reconvene the Wayne County Board of Adjustment meeting. And I'll turn that over to you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first, I'll start by um, recapping briefly at your meeting in May. Um, the Board of Adjustment held a public hearing regarding a solar facility, um, Cookstown Solar. Um, this is where, of course, we're picking up today. At that meeting, um, a public hearing was held. It was asked of the applicant to um, speak with property owners, hold a meeting, um, and um, come back to see if there was any adjustments that could be made to the site plan. Um, and so with that, I will say that um, the applicant has done so on May 31st, has met with neighbors um, there in, um, in the neighborhood. Um, they have talked about some of the changes and have brought in some revisions. And briefly, I will mention um, originally there was on the site plan, and I don't know if we can bring that up on the screen really quick. Um, the, uh, well, just bring up the, um, the new one. Yep. If you see the property to the right, um, bottom right, um, you see the subdivision there, um, there, the subdivision lots. Back behind those lots, the applicant has made some adjustments. Originally, there was an opaque fence with some of those panels pulled up as much as some of them were around 50 feet um, from the property lines. They've actually moved those panels back. I, I believe um, they are 200 plus feet from the adjacent properties. And instead of the opaque fence, they have agreed to go in and put in a vegetative buffer, um, a 25-foot vegetative buffer, I believe, there. In addition, the southern property, um, the southern end here, right there, they have gone along there and also added vegetative buffer there as well. They didn't have anything indicated um, along that property or along that line. Um, so they've made some adjustments to that southeast and south southern um, edge of the site plan. Um, and in doing so, they have made some adjustments to the panels and other locations. Uh, I guess it what appears to me they've had to accommodate for some of the panels they lost on that southeast side. They've made some adjustments in some other places. But, um, but that right there is a close-up view of the changes that have been made. <clears throat> Um, with that said, um, there also was a solar glare study that was performed. Um, that solar glare study was sent to the uh, Wayne County Airport, um, to the airport's consultant, um, Jason Elliott, who has reviewed it and um, has stated that he has no concerns on behalf of the airport regarding solar glare. Um, finally, also, there is a... Uh, um, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base has reviewed the site plan, uh, the revised site plan, um, and has indicated that they also have no concerns with, um, with the solar facility um, as proposed. Um, so with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Questions? And, 
Also, before I sit down, I do want to mention that um, with a special use permit, um, that basically, and I'll, I'll go through these really quick, um, based on our zoning ordinance, what you have to consider when reviewing special use permits, um, that you must find, um, um, basically, that you have to find from the evidence that um, in the record that it meets these requirements. Um, and briefly they are, the proposed use does not affect adversely the general plans for physical development of the county and will not be contrary to the purposes stated in these regulations. The proposed use will not adversely affect the health and safety of the county residents and will not be detrimental to the use or development of adjacent properties or other neighborhood uses. The proposed use will not be affected adversely by existing uses and will be placed on a lot of sufficient size to satisfy the space requirements of said use. The proposed use will not constitute a nuisance or hazard because of the number of persons who will use the facility, the vehicular movement, or the noise or fume generation, and the proposed use shall be subject to the minimum dimensional requirements of the district in which it is to be located and shall conform to the off-street parking and loading regulations. Additionally, the Board of Adjustment may issue a special use permit if its findings are favorable. As an additional safeguard, the Board may impose or require as conditions such additional restrictions and standards as may be necessary to protect the health and safety of the community and to protect the value and use of property in the general neighborhood. And considering those findings of facts, the board has to look at the record and the evidence that has been submitted in making those determinations. Um, so with that, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Any questions, Barry? Thank you, Barry. Um, I know there's been a lot of different phone calls and concern by different people, and I've had calls myself, but um, it will not impact my decision. I will be making my decision today based on the facts that are given to me in front of me. I just wanted to state that for the record. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. If I might inquire to counsel, for the record here, would you explain the difference between this type of uh, procedure versus a rezoning uh, request? Yes, uh, a rezoning request uh, is not a quasi-judicial hearing. This is quasi-judicial. The only thing that you are entitled to use to make your decision here is evidence that has been presented to you at this hearing and it has to have been sworn. All the people who have testified at the previous hearing have been sworn, and that is evidence. Other things that ha can be considered are things that are presented to you that you have requested, for instance, that drawing that has just been shown to you. You cannot uh, consider anything that you have observed outside of this hearing from somebody who has not been sworn for you. You would have to, in a zoning matter, you would have very limited ways that you could be recused. In other words, not have to vote. You would have to have a personal interest in the Thing or somebody in your immediate family would have to have a personal interest. In this, if you have been, if you've gotten extracurricular or ex parte information that you think is going to affect your judgment, you need to recuse yourself. Now, the chairman has just said he's had some calls, but none of those calls are going to have an effect on how he's going to vote on it. If other, if anybody has had calls or conversations or anything like that with someone who, and they can't get that out of their mind, then they would not be able to vote. They would need to recuse themselves. Uh, you've got a situation, you're acting as a judge and jury in this matter, and I think that uh, something that uh, a good example would be if a judge was sitting having a trial, he wouldn't ask the people in the courtroom whether you think the person's guilty or not guilty. 
the judge has got to make that decision based on evidence that is properly before him and that's what you're sitting as a judge that's why it's considered quasi judicial uh, you have the uh, obligation to make a decision but you're not supposed to make it if you are using evidence otherwise the uh, in this kind of case the it's a majority vote of those who are able to vote if somebody were absent they wouldn't be counted if somebody is properly recused they would not be counted so it's a majority of whoever is in fact voting the one thing that uh, the planner very great said in addition to all those six items I believe there are that must be considered if you're going to give a, a special use and you're talking about here a special use from the zoning or uh, things and your zoning ordinance clearly allows uh, as a special use in the uh, agricultural uh, residential zone that this property is in clearly allows a solar facility uh, in addition to that uh, he mentioned that Seymour Johnson had again looked at it and you have the Seymour Johnson overlay the flight overlay so you ha and they have approved it so you're talking about really special uses for two different things but in addition to that you can put any additional thing on the special use that you think is necessary uh, any kind of uh, safeguard that restrictions that you think is necessary yes this uh, this is in my district as most of you know I have been bombarded with phone calls and uh, text messages and even have uh, gone out and looked at the site and surrounding area having said that uh, on, upon advice of our of council, our county attorney, Mr. Parker, uh, I'm going to recuse myself from voting on this uh, solar facility. However, I want to make it clear that if I were able to vote on this, that I would vote against this solar facility. So I am recusing myself based upon council advice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Other comments? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. It's my understanding in council and, and uh, Mr. Gray and Mr. Crumper, if you would, and Mr. Neal, uh, this solar facility meets all of the requirements that Wayne County requires. I mean, there's no there's no gray area. It's this this it meets everything that is required by the county. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I too have received a uh, several phone calls um, of, of individuals concerned. <coughs> However even with those uh, telephone calls I it, it will not uh, affect my decision uh, here today anyone else it's a pleasure to vote mr. Oh, chairman I move approval um, with the additional condition condition that the temporary retention pond uh, be made permanent to assist in uh, some of the flooding issues that have been brought to, to light uh, or the additional runoff okay. we have a motion on the floor is there any discussion all those in favor please raise your right hand Thank you. Okay, now we'll move to adjourn the Wayne County Board of Adjustment meeting and we'll reconvene the Board of Commissioners meeting. And we'll move into unfinished business. And I think we've got David Harris here for the 
the CDDG DR update. Right. You're welcome. And uh, just a, a quick introduction, as the board knows, Dave Harris is our, our consultant in helping us with all our CWD uh, DR grants. And, and I just want to thank Dave for the work that he and his staff has done uh, getting us to this point. Uh, it, it may seem like a, a slow process, however, it's not because of the work that Dave and his staff has. There have you know, been issues that you're aware of with the state, uh, but, but Dave and his staff has really done an incredible job and just wanted to publicly thank you for that. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, Carol uh, provided a handout, I think, in front of you. Um, it's one hour review. And I, Want to point out? I think we also kind of wanted to hit highlights for not just the CDBG DR, but also the HMGP, since we were recently awarded the um, acquisition uh, grant. And I'll just go over these briefly and be glad to um, answer any questions that you may have. <clears throat> as um, as a manager indicated, the the DR program is from from an external standpoint seemed to be going fairly slow, but from the internal standpoint, at least as it relates to getting the volume of applications processed, that's that's going now much more quickly than it did uh, three months ago. Uh, the numbers you have in front of you in terms of the, the Wayne County Intake Center here, uh, we're now up to having processed 258 applications, 132 of which are finished and are at the state level. Uh, where they're doing their review for uh, further eligibility and duplication of benefits. Um, those include both the ones they've already approved and also there's a category for renters. Uh, initially there were renters that were applying um, for which there wasn't any direct community development assistance, but the state is keeping those in the mix because they're looking at possibly coming up with some state funding for those. Um, we're still processing 126 applications at the center. Um, and I might point out that uh, only about 100 of those are actually Wayne County. Um, we're now processing applications from other counties. Um, and that's a change that was just made. <clears throat> and that, that goes into the next session. The uh, state has set up three additional regional application intake centers. Uh, primarily for the 18 tier two counties. Remember, Wayne County is one of the big four uh, tier one counties, along with Edgecombe, Cumberland, Robinson, uh, and of course Wayne. There are 18 other counties um, that had less damage, uh, but they also have received uh, funding for from the community development program. Um, but there was no application system that had been established for them, and in lieu of having each and every county set up a center like Wayne counties. Uh, the state elected to set up three regional centers and those uh, counties would be uh, you know going into those centers. What they also and that those in Windsor, Kinsler, Kinston and also in Fair Bluff. What the state also did though was to make the existing four centers, the tier one centers, regional centers. So now we are authorized to take applications from anybody that walks in or anybody who's um, an appointment is made by the state's 211 system. Um, and as a result, we have been taking applications from, uh, from other counties. Uh, the state is continuing the outreach efforts as well as the uh, county in terms of publicizing the, the need to uh, submit applications. Um, of course, all applications originate by calling 211. Uh, the state's um, appointment system referral service for the community development DR program and they set the appointments at the center um, and then the person goes. Typically though, when, um, once, once they come to the center the first time and we, we've kind of, we made changes since the original approach. I mean, everybody was coming in, they were having two hour sessions. They were having to come back for three, four, five more two hour sessions. <laughs> um, it was, um, confusing to say the least, but uh, once we can get the people into the center the first time from that original appointment, then we are the ones that will work with them. Um, we'll describe to them exactly what they need. We'll provide them a list of anything they may not have at the time. 
we will ask them to call us if they got any questions, whatever information they need. We now provide, we have um, added some staff in the center so that people can walk in and provide documents. Previously, you couldn't get through the door without an appointment. And we considered that, you know, not the level of service that Wayne County expected. So um, we just decided that we're gonna, we're gonna have that available as you would any other county department in, in a lot of cases. Um, and that's made it much easier for the families. Um, we, we, are, we have kind of internally a, um, that kind of a pool going as to how quick we can turn applications around. Uh, initially, the first application submitted were taking two months to get through the system and approved by the state. Uh, we now have a number of them that we've processed in uh, two days, a week, eight days. And now it really depends on the individual and how much of the information they bring with them the first time. And of course, when they leave, they have a list of every single item for their unique situation for what they need to bring back the second time. And use that pretty well gets it. Unless something is missing, in which case we now allow emailing. They didn't allow that before. <laughs> We allow drop-offs, uh, anything, whatever we can do to make that process easier, simpler, um, and more convenient. Um, in terms of, uh, that's been internal, obviously, with the intake center and the one-on-one -on -one with the families, but I wanted to point out that the state has now started the outreach process inspections within each of the homes, the ones that have been determined to be eligible. Uh, the state has contracted with a um, emergency uh, management uh, consulting firm called, um, I'll make sure I get this right, Innovative Emergency Management Inc. and they abbreviated IEM. So when you hear IEM, that is now the company that is responsible for the state's um, uh, disaster recovery efforts under community development. And in fact, that second sheet showing the eight steps that I know the board has talked about in the past, they're now responsible for all eight. Um, with, an, and in some cases, the county uh, participating, but generally that one firm is to pretty much marshal all the resources to get the state's community development program uh, moving forward. They are still working with a number of the original consulting firms that the state had hired particularly in terms of processing applications through the Salesforce system. Uh, but now they've come in and pretty much set a whole new direction as to what they're gonna do. They immediately started uh, setting up the inspections, what's called the damage assessments. That's the last section on this page. And what happens is their teams are now going to the houses. The damage assessments is several parts. <laughs> um, First thing is they look at the repairs that the owner has made. They look at the uh, receipts that they've had, look, make sure those repairs were actually made and, and are consistent with the receipts. They're then looking at what repairs are remaining to be made. They then from that will develop a scope of work and using a, um, a HUD approved uh, construction uh, cost estimating software system called Xactimate, they are now creating not only the scope of work, but an estimate as to what the cost of the needed repairs are in order to get that house back up to, to standard. In some cases, it may, if it's, you know, the house is more than 50% damaged, it's in a 100-year floodplain, elevation is gonna be one of the components. If the estimate shows that the cost of the repairs exceeds 80% of the value of the structure, HUD says we're not going to spend money on that one. We will reconstruct it, basically replace it on site. These individuals are now going through making those determinations um, in order to get at exactly what type of housing assistance the family is eligible for from CWGDR. You don't, you don't simply start out with, okay, you're going to get repair, you're going to get replacement, you're going to get temporary relocate, you're going to get so-and-so. It starts from this initial damage assessment. If necessary, they'll be doing lead-based paint inspections for houses that are uh, built prior to 1978. Um, and included with this is an environmental review that is required. Um, and I know Mr. Mayo in some previous meetings has, has 
Okay, is there any way we, somehow we can reduce this burden, shorten the time, have a quicker way of going about it? But um, I can tell you this, when it comes to the environmental functions with HUD, um, if we want to make changes, we're probably going to look in another direction. Uh, the environmental is pretty much it. I mean, that, nothing happens. They've done a, a what's called a uh, an overall countywide assessment already of Wayne County and all the different uh, environmental influences you may have: wetlands, floodplain, hazardous materials, um, explosive sites, uh, landfill site, anything you can imagine, historic properties. And from that, they've narrowed it down and said, okay, within Wayne, uh, and also the um, endangered species. And they've narrowed it down and said, okay, within Wayne County, we have we have the potential for certain factors that could exist on some of our properties. They've gone through this litany of hundreds of factors that all of which don't apply to each county. They've identified the ones that apply to Wayne, and then when they go in and they do their home inspections for damage assessments, they're going to be looking at um, the environmental factors as well. Sign off on those. And that is that is a pre-requirement before they ever come to a determination as to what assistance they're entitled to, because there may be an environmental condition that needs to be addressed as a part of that um, either house repair or um, house uh, reconstruction. <clears throat> we are now at uh, they've completed 84 damage assessments, which and they just started uh, June the 28th. Um, we have uh, 117 that's actually approved and in the meal uh, that they are able to do. So having done 84 in a matter of a few weeks, they've got a lot of people um, on the ground. And this is not just Wayne. This is in the four tier one counties. The same thing is, is happening in the other ones as well. And um, most of the other counties, they're up to 70, 80, 90, 100 assessments that have already been done in each one of those counties as well. So you will see, once we, it's, it's kind of like we've been at inertia, not, not just standing still, processing paper, et cetera. But as soon as those assessments are through and they've made those determinations, it immediately goes, in fact, I won't go over all eight steps, but it goes to the next step where they're actually in a position to offer the homeowner or indicate to the homeowner what they're um, um, eligible for, the amount of assistance. They, they uh, execute preliminary grant agreements for that, conditions that may exist. If you're in a hundred year flood plan, you've got to maintain flood insurance. Uh, there's going to be a five year recapture provision. Remember the CDBG, if we provide assistance to a household to prevent people from selling it the next day and profiting. There's going to be a period in which if it's sold within, a, and, and the state has set a standard for all of these for just five years, doesn't matter whether it's repair or, or whether it's um, uh, reconstruction. So that information will be provided to the uh, families in writing, and my guess is they'll be going out um, certainly less than 90 days, possibly some starting within 30 days, and then the uh, process will uh, hopefully give for some actual, you know, bricks and mortar work and, and some uh, real construction work at uh, some of the sites. I'm glad to answer your questions on that and then I'll do a brief uh, review of HMGP. Question, Mr. Chair. Yes. David, uh, on the HMGP, on the 84 properties, um, <clears throat> I know they've been approved, uh, but what kind of timeline are we looking at? I'm still getting, uh, I'm still getting emails from citizens that are asking I think sometime in the middle of July was when the, the property owners were supposed to be contacted and not a single one they have contacted me they're asking the question we haven't been contacted by anyone can, can you give an insight on that does it take two or three months or what does it take once you're approved the, um, if, if you want to, if you want to go ahead and, and go to that, yeah. the, these bullets are the steps that, that we'll take, and let's go through those, and I'll try to translate those into a a monthly schedule, which right now is a little tough until we have that first meeting with state officials after you sign a grant agreement 
saying you have the money that you can spend. Um, they issued the award letter on July the 3rd. Uh, the next step is the states to prepare a fairly extensive grant agreement uh, submitted to the county for execution back to back and forth to the state uh, so that all parties are signed. Uh, the next step is that uh, mercy management staff is to meet with uh, county staff and my staff and discuss the startup process for it. As I've told you all in the past, every disaster seems to generate a different set of rules and requirements that we have to go over at the beginning before we actually get started because if we try to depend on the rules that existed in the past, there's a good chance that it's actually changed. This startup meeting is where we will get the, the basics for it. There will They actually have an SOP, <laughs> which is we're is rare in these programs now <laughs> for the DR, but have an SOP for acquisition process under emergency management. They're probably going to tweak it a little bit from some recent federal changes. But when we get that, here are your rules, here are the requirements, here's how you can avoid stamping on landmines and making expenditures that are not eligible, then we're in a position to be able to do something. Part of that review is there's been some major changes in procurement of professional services, well, construction too, but professional services as well. And that's what, you know, for this program, appraisers, surveyors, attorneys, that's the next step. They've got to provide us some guidance with the new rules that went into effect July 1 for all grants that are executed at July 1 as to what those, those um, procedures are. The, one of the primary things, and I'll just mention you, in, in any of these large scale programs, when you want to hire professional services for that, the only way you can get the program done quickly is you hire a body that submits proposal. <laughs> that are qualified. In other words, in, in Floyd, when, when we were doing 500 units in, an, in, one, in a single buyout, we hired every single appraiser in the county and surrounding county, hired every single surveyor and all the, legal, all the law firms, put them together in teams, and then we made assignments. In this case, I'd love to be able to get proposal of four or five professional services each, four or five appraisers, surveyors, attorneys, team them up, and then assign anywhere 15, 20 properties apiece at exactly the same time within a week. Get it out on the street, every single thing at one time, let's run with it. The burden would be on us as all of that volume of stuff comes back in, getting it processed, getting it to the point of making offers. But we've got to make up some time for this. I mean, we, we've got to be able to devote resources to it. And we're sitting here with a, with a simple little question of, hey, do the new federal guidelines allow us to hire most of the ones who submit a proposal? You know, normally the process is you go with the lowest responsible bidder. Well, we want to go with all of them. Okay, so how, what's the contract mechanism for that so we meet the new federal requirements? I don't think there's a whole lot to it. I think it's uh, it maybe one sentence, but then I don't write the rules. Um, I can see how it would work under the new guidelines, but like I say, I don't, I don't write those rules. Um, we, we will be doing that after that implementation meeting simply internally between, between the staff. But the next step is, and, and the key one is, the public meeting we want to have with all 84 families at the same time. And, and Chip and I have been, been looking at schedules and that sort of thing. And, and to get back to you, one of the reasons we had not sent them a letter, the letter that's going to them is going to be, hey, we need for you to come to a meeting. We're going to give you written information, guidelines, acquisition processes, who to contact, and the whole works. It'll be a packet. We're going to sit down with all 84 simultaneously and answer every single question that comes up until we're done and they're satisfied and they can go home and understand what the process is. Once we can get, and, and that, by the way, meeting we're looking at trying to schedule either before the end of this month, first of all, I mean, within the next two, three weeks, um, we were hoping the state, we really need the state to meet with us with the grant agreement before we schedule that meeting, I'll be honest with you. I can give them every bit of information about all the, the last acquisition projects, and I'm not going to be 100% sure that's how it's going to be applied here. It's a, 
we, we really need a state to come in, get the grant agreement, set up our startup meeting, and we can we'll be ready to go with the uh, you know, with the households. <coughs> Once we get and so we have that meeting by the end of the month, uh, hopefully first uh, of August, depending on the state's startup meeting. Um, once we get the, and of course the procurement process on hiring professional services, I mean, solicit for two or three weeks, come back in, board makes approval, we sign contracts, that's a 30 day process. After that, we make the assignments and there would be um, offers, offers of purchase could be made within 90 days of assigning all of that to everybody. Now, the program isn't going to be completed in 90 days, but getting the first wave out, getting the information to the, to the households, and then starting to schedule the ones that accept the offers, the ones that are priorities because they're, they're renting somewhere, they're paying a mortgage, they're financially they're just in a disaster. Um, we've, we, we've got to prioritize those and, and get them to, to the front. And, and I'll be honest with you, in terms of, I mean, this is a cash deal. As long as we get the information from the uh, uh, mortgage companies, SBA, whatever other uh, liens they may have, county makes provisions for um, uh, the closing funds, and we schedule closings with as many attorneys as we can in whatever period of time we can. And then immediately after that, Angie and Allison are going to want to they do a cost report to get the county's money back in the, in the general fund. But uh, so that that's how that process can work. So we're looking at acquisitions, at, you know, this fall, that's beginning what, this fall. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. What's the, what's the estimated time if things go well? I know some of it falls on the homeowner, but let's, let's say they do their due diligence. What are, What's the real rough when when funding is at the source at the address of these 84 properties? That's that's what I, that's what these people want to know. What are we looking at a project? If we can have the attorneys, surveyors, and appraisers on board, uh, you know, first part of September, uh, make the assignments. Um, you know, 90 days later, there should be some that are coming out of that pipeline that um, <coughs> offers can be made. I mean, we fully intend to close on properties before the end of the year. And thank you for that because do you know what kind of shape some of these people are in financially? Uh, we're, we're over 19 months into this process, as you know. Everybody, everybody, including you, are frustrated. Uh, we. This, this is totally unacceptable, and I understand it comes from not the state in particular, but um, HUD is part of the issue. But the bottom line is is that I'm, I want to push our legislatures and our congressmen to try to look at all the way from HUD all the way down to look and see if we can streamline this process. There's no way it should take 19 months. Now we're looking at three or four more months, but we're 19 months and, months and counting. Um, that's still unacceptable, and I think it's unacceptable to you, Dave. I really do. Thank you. The um, I know the uh, previously board members indicated what can we do? How do we get something <coughs> kind of moving? Yeah. Um, and obviously there's a lot of different direction go in. What I wanted to do today was to give you three things that you either with a letter you know, resolutions don't do a whole lot with the staff I mean it <laughs> um, a, a letter from the chairman the manager telling them specifically hey this is what we need for you to do the last three bullets on this page are three things we need for the state to decide now that's not even including the startup meeting we've got and we need answers to questions on current guidelines effective new laws and that sort of thing that's kind of a given we've got three things here we need for the state to make a decision on in the buyout these people should be entitled to relocation gap assistance the state has got 236 million dollars we've got another 200 million dollars from state funding plus 
another 250 almost. There's another 168 million coming in once from what's called the mitigation category. Out of that is more than enough money to provide gap assistance for every single buyout in the state of North Carolina. And we don't have a process in place to do it. To use a penny of it, not one penny. So when we're talking about when we can make offers, mm -hmm. I want the state to tell us we, when we make an offer, normally it's we will make the offer and it will be combined with here's your relocation gap assistance. That's all calculated beforehand. Person gets a package. Here's what you would receive at closing. Here's the gap money you're entitled to. You can take that and shop for a replacement house. Right now, we make an offer end of September. Here's the here's the buyout amount. Take it or leave it. Because we do not have the gap money, and it is sitting there in all those sources of funding. If the state would simply sit down and say, "Hey, here's how we're going to make this thing work." There are some issues between the DR and FEMA on, you know, making things fit. But regardless of that, the state's got money. We got more DR money, and we've been we've been singing this song since the very first meeting we ever had with the state before there ever was a DR grant award. Exactly. This was last July and August. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we I would love for somebody to promote that need get that problem fixed let us make offers that include fair market value you know pre-disaster fair market value and gap assistance mm -hmm. uh, mr Mark, david I, I hear the, the anxiety in your voice and mr manager i asked this question out loud uh, to david but who do you think at the state level i'm gonna put you on the spot but i do who is the person who's holding it up? What office is holding it up? Or is there any such thing as an office that's holding it up? Because if there is an office that's holding it up because of procrastination, we need to write a strong letter saying, you know, let's, let's move along. That's holding it up. Uh, the, entire, the state's entire disaster recovery program is the North Carolina uh, Division of Emergency Management. So these go to Mike Seabury and tell him he needs to send it to. Mm -hmm. no, yes. And so these go to the governor. Uh, that's right. Him too. That was, that was my question. Is it, is it the House? Is it the Senate? Is it the governor? It's the governor. Well, I, you know, I heard that this Mr. Seabury was down, and I think I read an article that, you know, he made a good presentation and well received, but all that's pretty language, and well received doesn't mean anything if people are still renting and paying a mortgage at the same time. Amen. I, I just want to, I, I'm glad I have been put in that position because, I, and I'm glad these other 84 people are a little bit more civilized than I am. I, I would be <laughs> not pleasant. And so I, I can imagine. So thank you for the report. We'll crap the letter and send it. Each time I hear this, it, it, it almost blinds me when I know that there are folk out there who are hurting, it, and we're, it's, it sounds like so much unnecessary bureaucracy. It, it sounds like there's a couple of different issues here, and Dave, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, one is the gap funding letter, and that's more of a, a process letter that we need to probably send to Sprayberry because he's kind of being charged with that fund. But I think we do need to send an overall letter to the governor and say to our displeasure and our concerns and, and the delays. That, that the bureaucracy and the changes and and just the lack of of, of impact Ooh. that the funding has had, you know, after 19 months. Uh, David, have you have you briefed the Goldsboro Council? Do I? Did you, did you uh, brief the Goldsboro Council? Give them an update. Uh, no, I haven't. I'm just wondering if a combined letter. Okay. We, we can wait. Well, we just we'll yeah. we, we can work on that. Well. Scott Scott would be glad to believe me, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Sir. And, and, you know, we mentioned Mr. Sprayberry's name. He's only the messenger. He, he's only the messenger. He can only do what he's been instructed to do or got the authority the, the authority that's been given to him. You know, it, 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 like I say, it, it's either the House, the Senate, or the Governor, and, and in my opinion, it is the Governor. So, But that's just my opinion. So that's, let's, let's don't condemn Mr. Sprayberry. I, I, I think a lot of times a shotgun approach works well. Yeah, spray it and get everybody. Uh, you know, I, I, 
Get out here, Mr. Mr. Sprayberg and the governor. But it sounds like the legislature in Raleigh control everything else. I mean, pretty much. And I haven't heard them mentioned at all. It sounds like we we're excusing the most powerful group of people in North Carolina. And I believe if there was a interest at that level, we would get something done because they control everything else. Uh, they, you know that 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 uh, what is that they call it the. Uh, the uh, majority, that they got the majority that can't be overruled. Well, you know, heaven forbid, let's... A letter to that group might help. Mr. Chairman, I only basically have one question I want yep. to ask, and that is, it says the North Carolina uh, Emergency Man recently hired IEM to manage the entire program. Why, who was in charge of the program prior to the hiring of IEM? It was a combination of uh, state emergency management staff <clears throat> and uh, some other consulting firms that they had started out with originally doing pieces of the So it was kind puzzle. of a piecemeal. And recently they've decided to put it all under one umbrella, one entity. Is that correct? Yes. And how long ago did they make that decision? End of June. End of June. So what I'm gathering from that is they finally figured out it wasn't working and they decided to actually hire somebody who knew what they were doing. And as a result of it, over the last few weeks, what I'm hearing, hundreds have been processed. Is that correct? Yes. So it's there's finally moving in the right direction. There's been more activity in since they've come on board than there's been six months prior to that. <laughs> Other than the intake centers, sure. there's been now well over 2,000, 2,200 applications processed and just the four centers before the other three came online. But we're not getting to getting houses fixed. Applications don't do any good unless you got somebody processing them, right? right. <laughs> so when it says 117 approved and eligible for assistance, that's, you know, when you see stuff like that written on a piece of paper, you know, the average citizen expect a check to be in the mail. <laughs> yeah. And if I follow up on this just one minute, the the, uh, the acronym that uh, Joe just mentioned, that's a statewide, the uh, IEM, emergency IEM, management That's statewide. That's a statewide umbrella group. Is that how? That, I, that is the firm that the state has hired. State to manage that the whole the DR CDBG DR program. So in other words, your office would be ready to move if they were ready to move. There's nothing yes. else. If there's nothing in Wayne County that's holding up, you, you're, you're not that I'm aware ready. of, <laughs> sir. Not that I'm aware of. All right. Okay. I, I just want to make sure that nothing that we could, could have a hand in. All right. What's what's holding it up? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Finally, I, final statement. Mike Sprayberry, when he was here, alluded to the fact that this part of this program is new. He had no staff, no nothing. He was scrambling to try to hire enough staff to implement this part of it. But here's here's where my where my understanding is. These eight steps right here, according to Mike Sprayberry, is is over a year just to get an approval. This is HUD. This is some of the FEMA, but this is HUD. Why is it we should have been at this point, you know, over a year ago or longer because of these eight steps that need to be simplified and not take a year just to get your application approved and then another six or eight months before you're accepted. Am I correct on that? That's what Mike Sprayberry said about these eight steps and, and the bottom line is is that we need to get we need to get it taken care of all of these rules and regulations that we don't have control over federal government we need to get this trimmed down to where 19 months should not be any more after everything's said and done a year at the most one last one you know, last so that's that's all i have Mr. one last question and comment it's crazy i, I think we have our uh, Mr. Mel Powell. I just thought of a broad question. <laughs> the last bad hurricane we had was it 
October the 8th, two years ago. Was that about right? October the 8th, October. October's on the way. Uh, all I'm saying is in a rhetorical kind of way. We're waiting on the next, a next possibility's gonna hit us before we get this one straightened out. And that's such a shame. And, and I say that so that, not you, but everybody who uh, somewhere down the line can do something about it needs to remember that uh, storms sort of come in real bad and sort of come in every other year, every three years, it were, we're in line for another. Yeah. And then there'll be a whole other group of people. Yeah. And I've heard it said that there's still people waiting to get final adjudication on stuff that's happened two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. It's such a shame that bureaucracy can hold the process up like this. We need to be better than this. Yes, we do. I, I want to point out one thing about the so nobody gets confused about the relocation gap assistance within the CDBGDR program. State has buyout money, at acquisition money, enhanced buyout money. I won't get into the distinctions, but basically, anybody who wants to get bought out in the DR program, that can happen. Added to those buyout categories is gap relocation assistance. It is in place, it is there, but it is only for the CDBG DR approved applicants. <coughs> We do not have any relocation gap money for the HMGP beneficiaries. So they have a system in place, knowing how important that is in making a buyout work, but we just hadn't had it in place. And CHIP submitted those applications for HMGP March 31st, 2017. Wow. And we told them then we needed relocation gap money. They made it available for the DR. HUD has it. In its, in its arsenal, in its toolbox for hurricane recovery. But we just hadn't added it to the HMGP program to give them the same level of benefits that the HUD beneficiaries are getting. And we just don't think that's fair. David, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the um, chill building, Mr. Hennicott. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the board's aware, uh, we had a bid opening on July 10th for the proposed shell building to go out at the Parkey site. If you remember, we have a pad ready site that is ready. This is a 50,000 square foot uh, shell building we were looking at. Uh, I do want to thank uh, the work of WCDA, also uh, our staff of Kendall Lee, uh, Ryan Preble, and our assistant manager Chip Crumpler. Uh, we went through the process. We had 11 bidders uh, who showed up on July 10th. We had a range from a high of $3.27 million to a low of $2,063,900 uh, by Jackson Builders. So in reviewing that, the next day we had a facilities committee meeting. We went over the bids with the facilities committee and the recommendation from the facilities committee was to begin negotiating with the lowest bidder, which is Jackson Bidder. Uh, there may be ways to look at the, the shell, the skin, uh, for some cost savings there. So with the board's approval, we would go back to Jackson Bidders, see if we can get the cost out a little bit, and then we would bring back hopefully a final contract to this board at our next meeting uh, for approval so we can move forward with the shell building. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, it is the recommended recommendation of the facilities committee that we authorize the county manager to negotiate uh, with Jackson Builders uh, to find some cost-saving measures and to bring that recommendation back to us for approval. Okay. So I so move. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Uh, you know, I, I, I agree with the motion, uh, but this is this is would. What the, the economy and all is right now, uh, we need to move on this pretty quick. This is, you know, because prices on some things are escalating and and we don't need to be, we need to go ahead and move on this as quick as we can. It, this is a really good bit. Yeah. This is a really good bit. But there may be ways to do some some additional cost shapings on that. And, and I appreciate Kendall and his suggestions as well on that. 
Okay. Any more comments? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. We discussed that earlier at length. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So I move, Mr. Chairman. Motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. May I add a, um, some more information to one of the budget amendments? Oh, let me. Yes, I can. <laughs> yes, please do. There was a question concerning sure. budget amendment one for the health department. I have talked with Mr. Madden. He said that that is a position that is $32,000 that we are uh, looking for help through the North Carolina Alliance of Public Agencies to fill through December in hopes that some of those individuals that help us may be qualified to take on that position. Okay, thank you. Does that your request, Mr. Raycock? Yeah, I went the opposite direction, <laughs> the opposite direction of what I wanted to go. But, uh, but keep but in mind, this, the, the 32,000 does not include fringes, benefits, health, um, we have to pay a portion to the North Carolina Alliance of Public Agencies, just like they were a temp agency. So they get their portion, and we also have to pay the um, em their employee. Okay. I'm sorry. Mr. Kerr. All right. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Okay. You business, Manfield. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Board of Commissioners, as you're aware, there have been discussion uh, about changing our current schedule at the Wayne County Landfill. Currently, the landfill is closed on Wednesdays, and we would like to look at making the change to be open on Wednesdays as well. Our current schedule is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and we are closed on Sundays. In order to make this change to be open on Wednesdays, we would like to adjust our hours uh, and our operation from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Saturday. This would not require additional staffing or additional overtime at this time. And again, we've had uh, preliminary conversations with our residential haulers, and they also believe the new schedule will suit them well, as well, well also. Um, their concern is basically they have more uh, uh, issues at the landfill early in the morning than they do later in the afternoon. Um, also, by opening the, uh, the landfill and having that open daily during the week, uh, we should not have any issues of citizens not having any options with respect to uh, their trash disposal during the week. One of the concerns I think was brought up by the board is looking at our convenience centers. And our convenience centers are a little bit different uh, because we have 13 different locations. Uh, right now we're analyzing uh, to see if we can adjust those hours uh, and how we could do that without any major costs uh, associated with the county. Uh, again, currently we use part-time employees that are staffing the convenience centers. And if we change the hours and add additional hours, that may switch them to a full-time status. And then if we switch into a full-time status, then you're talking about the additional benefits that you do have to add on. Uh, one of the things in talking with Tim, and Tim Rogers is here, and I appreciate the work Tim and his staff has done on this, uh, is we would like to maybe look at surveys and just kind of start looking at trash flow and see what's the best time and when we're busiest uh, at our convenience centers. One of the things we like to recommend, and we can do this earlier if the board so chooses, but we were looking at a uh, September 4th uh, opening to change the hours, that's uh, the day after Labor Day. We feel like since it's kind of been historical that we've been closed on Wednesdays, we need to start advertising and giving people, let them know that we will be open on Wednesdays. So we just don't open up next week and nobody show up. So we want to kind of do a marketing uh, plan for that. Uh, again, I want to thank Tim, and Tim's here if you have any questions, uh, but we would like to make this recommend, recommendation at this time. So we need a motion? If there's a motion, yes, sir. We would need a motion to approve the change. Is there a motion? Um, I I've got a motion to the discussion. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Uh -oh. Chairman. Uh, one of my concerns is you said we've got 13 convenience centers yes sir 
and some of our part-time employees may have to go to the full-time status. My question is, why can't we hire more part-time people? That, that may, that's an, an, an option as well that we're, we're looking at. But again, you would be looking at, we're, we're, sometimes you have trouble filling the part-time now. Okay. So that, that was kind of a little bit of a concern. But we wanted to have a little bit more time to really analyze the whole uh, convenience center aspect. That's sure. it. I have a question on our uh, convenience sites. Uh, do we have any um, containers at any of these sites that uh, citizens can carry uh, yard clippings, like when they trim their bushes and things like that, uh, rather than going all the way to the landfill? Uh, do we have any places at these convenience sites where I'm not talking about people that do construction work? I'm talking about for citizens. The reason I'm asking is that in, in in Carteret County they have that at their convenience sites uh, two or three dumpsters where people can come and bring their yard clippings uh, to that site I'm just wondering do we have anything here or have we ever thought about it I think we do we do okay it seemed to be it seemed to be pretty popular you know to do that so that's fine thank you Okay. I got a motion on the floor. Is there any more discussion? And just uh, is the board okay with making this change September third? Just want yes. to make sure. Okay. I thought that was too much. Okay. Oh, okay. I just wanted to <laughs> September fourth or fourth. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Whatever yes. that correct that is. All right. Now. All the paper. Please raise your right hand. Thank you. When do you think you'll be able to come back with a recommendation on the we're, venue centers? We're working on that now. I'm saying probably sixty days that we should be able to have a, a recommendation. But but again, we're going to monitor the trash flow and the times and those type of things. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. certainly it would, you can make a decision within 60 days. <laughs> I always go to the outside. I always go to the outside. <laughs> we're spending the too. Yeah. Well, we're, we're spending that, I, work. I know government works slow. Well, I, mean, you know, no, I, I, just, I, I, want, I just wanted to get not a time. rocket scientist type right. thing. Just we're not going to go to the moon. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back as quickly as possible, Thank but you. I wanted to make sure we had enough time. Just don't take 19 months. No, no, no sir. No 19 months. Promise about that. Well, just uh, from a logistical standpoint, if you're going to monitor how much is coming in, you got to have some time to be able to make a clear evaluation as to what that load is over time. Right. And I know that it sounds like the decision will be made in a week, but all the trash stuff don't come in in a week. So uh, I'm sure that time will be used wisely to determine exactly what needs to be done. Right. Although I'm for getting stuff done quickly, let's not rush a process that needs to have time. Right. That, that'll be that. Right. I the, think that's the what The 60 you mean. days will be the outside. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair. You're not going to make everybody happy. Just do know that. <laughs> Mr. Aycock. Now, you know, and I, I'm not trying to make things more complicated, and, and this might be completely out of the question. So I know our 13 container sites, some of them a whole lot, have a whole lot more volume than others and it it, you know, it may not can be done but could you look at the ones that is, are not don't have the flow or the, uh, the intake that some could you look at maybe some of them not being open on Wednesday I mean I, I mean is that a possibility I mean I'm just throwing that out because I don't I don't, I don't we, know we, we, we could we'll be glad to look at all options just look, just look yes, at sir. all options. We'll be glad to look at all options. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, moving on to the um, quarter cent sales tax. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the board's aware, this is uh, something that really has come up during our budget discussion about how we could look at uh, additional funding source for uh, public education, uh, which also includes. Wayne Community College and Wayne County Public Schools. So uh, they've always are, are needing additional funding if it's from teacher supplements, if it's from additional classrooms, if it's from renovations. Uh, they, there's funding that we are looking at allocating specifically towards uh, public education. And, and one of the ideas that have come up is placing the uh, quarter cent sales tax on the ballot. Um, we cannot specifically state on the ballot that it is for education. 
However, we can pass by resolution that is the intent of the Wayne County Board of Commissioners uh, to use the quarter cent for education. So if you would like, I'll be glad to read the resolution and um, we'll discuss it afterwards. I think we've all read it, haven't we? Or I'll be glad or... I don't know that it's necessary. Do you, is it necessary? Council? No. Okay. I didn't think so. But but I do want to thank uh, uh, Carol and I do want to thank uh, Borden and Andrew as well. for. They, they did a good job and we gave them some ideas on right. our edits and they took care of it and I appreciate them doing that. Right. So is there a motion to approve? All right, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Okay, we've got a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. County Manager comments? Um, Nothing to report. Uh, again, I, I do want to thank uh, the facilities committee for meeting as quickly as we did with respect to the bids, and um, and I appreciate the facilities committee looking at a lot of different options. And um, we're going to have some recommendations that will come back uh, at our next meeting, uh, specifically dealing with the uh, county office building as well. So, a lot of things going on with re with respect to facilities. Uh, so I do appreciate the work that this board, the committee is doing, and also our staff. Good. So that's all, all right, I have at this time. I'll start with you, Mr. Mayo. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I just have a couple. Um, we had a library uh, board meeting, and of course, as you know, we've had a few uh, incidents that that have happened at our Goldsboro Library over the last month or so. Just want to stress that um, we are, we really need to, and that's what we are doing as a board, uh, library board. We we need, really need, need to try to get to where we've got security at the Goldsboro Library every day, uh, not on a hit and miss, uh, because of what's happening uh, in that particular library. But we need to look at other libraries to where we have. Um, a higher than normal uh, incidents that are happening. Uh, we also had a social services board uh, meeting. Um, social services, uh, for lack of a better term, they're grow we're growing like crazy because our clientele keeps growing. So there's a lot of people in Wayne County that are hurting, need a lot of assistance. Uh, also, I went to the Joint Board of Commissioners and Wayne County Developments Alliance uh, meeting out at the Maxwell Center, and um, also attended the uh, East Carolina Council meeting in Newburn. Uh, there's there's a lot that's going on on the cog. It's, it's, there's so much that you almost have to be an attorney to figure it out. But at any rate. Uh, there, there's a lot of changes going on. There's a lot of uh, budget situations with um, the East Carolina Council that we are addressing, but yet the mission is still being accomplished. It almost seems like that we might be crossing over. You know, I've said in the economic development and as far as apprenticeship training and training employees that we seem to be overlapping. Well, you know, we have the East Carolina Workforce Board, we have uh, WorkSource, we have the Community College, we have the State Apprenticeship Program. Sometimes these, these, these different programs seem to overlap a little bit. And I think that's what we're trying to address with East Carolina Council, is that we don't need to be butting heads with the STEM program in high schools. You know, we need to be working recently. So having said that, uh, it was a really good meeting. We always have good food. So um, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Camardi. I, I have one significant uh, report to make. Uh, I was trying to remember if I had gone to my committee meetings before we had our last meeting, but uh, I, I think that uh, I attend regularly the Board of, Commit the Board of Health and the Department of Social Service. And those uh, entities, although busy, seem to be working well. I, I'm, I'm real pleased at what I hear when we're at the meetings. Um, as Mr. Mayo alluded to the DSS, uh, it's busy growing. and uh, But that means that uh, 
That means that there's still a need for jobs and better wages in Wayne County to keep folk from having to depend upon extra services, and I'll just use that word when we're talking about DSS, extra services to make life uh, meaningful for our citizens. So those of you that serves on the ADA Economic Development Commission, uh, I know that there's some movement to improve that and new direction and directors. But keep in mind, and I would say this out loud to the employers who are already in the county, that we need to be hopefully moving towards a livable minimum wage. I won't quote the dollar figures exactly, but I believe Walmart has made a move to improve their salary structure. And so uh, those who say that they're interested in economic development and better jobs and so forth and so on, uh, it might be helpful for each entity to look at what they pay folk to work and therefore uh, decrease the amount of extra help that folk need through DSS by having better jobs and better wages. Having said that, uh, I would like to bring attention to uh, something that this board has done, and I give applause to all who supported this, and I think that means all seven of us. An EMS truck was made available to Southern Wayne so that they could start a full-scale program uh, to, to, to prepare young men, young, young people. <laughs> oh, let me get Jim out, get shot. But my family tell me that's the male show to send me, but I'll contribute it to age. Uh, 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 programs that are our young men can, our young people can take it Southern Wayne and once finished move directly into uh, activity on the trucks. Now, my colleagues to my right uh, have been more heavily involved in the EMS so forth than I have as a career. But we want to have good, strong young people out there to come and rescue us whenever we need it. And so, uh, Several days ago, and I and and I'll defer to my good colleague in the news, Mr. Merrill. He was there, took a lot of pictures, and I'm sure we'll probably see something about it in the Tribune. But it was the principal was ecstatic, overjoyed. Uh, there's going to be a. He, he's already had the, got the teacher assigned. Uh, someone who's been in the EMS business as long as I have been in contact with him and uh, Joe, Mr. Gurley could probably say more about that person's qualifications and I'll defer to him in a minute. But uh, they were really overjoyed and to the manager, our manager and to Mel Fowles. There was a, down, there's a great appreciation at Southern Wayne and Southern Wayne County for making that possible. I was invited to a uh, Rotary meeting, I think at Mr. Merrill's suggestion, although someone else invited me, they invited several people that day. And the principal gave an excellent overview of what that high school is about. I was really tickled at listening to him talk about, uh, this is his, again, his second year there, and he was talking about uh, the first year maybe was focusing on students and now he's ready to turn his attention more towards the teachers. And let me say something about that because the public needs to be aware. Good principals work hard to, number one, find and hire, find and recommend good teachers to the Board of Education to hire. That's how that sort of works. Teach principal, I'm not sure I them. They make recommendations for folk to be hired. And so he's moving in that direction to, to lead Southern Wayne to a better a place than they are right now. And he closed by 
being very appreciative of the fact that this board <coughs> is supporting the new gym <coughs> down in the, in the pipeline for Southern Wayne. And as I read in the newspaper, the, uh, uh, Dr. Harold is moving towards getting the bids in so that they can start turning some dirt down there soon. And so I just wanted to report to this board that the principal and the Southern Wayne community stands appreciative of uh, what has taken place on those particular instances over the last weeks. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I told me to go ahead and, uh, in his absence. Um, there are a number of things that are taking place with facilities, uh, and I want to remind everyone that uh, that process has started. WCDA has been relocated and they have moved into their new offices um, after extensive work by our facilities department. Um, they are very well pleased with their new location. Uh, the Board of Elections has, I went to visit with them and asked them when they planned to move and they'd already moved. So uh, they have relocated to the WCDA building. Um, that is vacated now, the county administration building. Um, it is uh, our intention to do some study and renovation of that building for probation and parole. Uh, we have asked and Commissioner Bell has agreed to work with probation and parole here locally uh, and on the state level as well as our facilities to come up with a plan for that renovation. Um, also, as in the process of that renovation, we are looking at the uh, vacated farm services offices for part of probation and parole. Between the two buildings, we feel like we can accommodate that to vacate the uh, Will Sullivan building. Um, should have recommendations at our next meeting from the architect uh, regarding our county office building. All these buildings have different names, but the uh, building where the health department at DSS is located. I do want to also mention the fact of this board now has approved the resolution to place the quarter cent sales tax on the November ballot, and I would encourage support of the citizens for that initiative. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about what occurred today. Um, <laughs> you know, when we run for office several years back, I do remember that, uh, and you become a commissioner, you are really not recognizing the fact that you may become a, or sit in a ju judicial manner. Uh, that's totally different for me uh, in that I'm used to making decisions based upon whatever the will of the people would be. In this case, that option was not there for us. We could not make a decision based upon our opinions. We had to make a decision based upon the facts. And not only the facts, but the facts that were presented in an evidentiary hearing. A uh, little bit different for me, but um, at any rate, I, I, I can see where there are some citizens that may not understand the limitations that we had and that was placed on us. Um, however, we lived up to our oath and, in fact, accomplished that, and we're moving forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bell. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, most of my committee meetings were, did not have meetings in July. But anyway, I did attend this uh, facility meeting, and I won't go into that because you and uh, the county manager have already mm -hmm. uh, brought it to the board. <laughs> Uh, I uh, went to East Point meeting. They had a little recognition for me for a job they said was well done, so I will accept that. <laughs> and uh, I see Miss Shirley Edwards is here. I did not attend the uh, social services meeting, not social services, but wages meeting, and she went to the board retreat. I was ill and couldn't go, so maybe she might have some hot topics that she'd like just to briefly bring to our attention if she don't mind. If not, I can understand. Yes, ma'am.
sorry I didn't notify you in advance. <laughs> As this board knows, I would assume they know, we're over 50 years old. And so being old, we've been doing a lot of things over and over. And what we've attempted to do for the last two years with Mr. Bell's input is do a lot of strategic planning, looking at the needs of this county wholeheartedly, which we've always done. But at this retreat, we had to come to grip with the extreme poverty that's in this county, the extreme needs, and the dire place it puts us as an agency with total dependency on federal dollars. So we did a lot of looking at how we can grow with some local support and some donations and how we can squeeze our employees to give us some greater input and work and to maximize every penny that we get and we do this not only on a yearly basis but every six months to nine months because we have had to over 50 years to be y'all talk a lot about federal dollars to be very very good stewards of those federal dollars so that is something we take very seriously that every penny we get the, it goes back to the citizens and they tell us whether or not they believe we're doing a good job. So the retreat focused on that, how we can continue to do a good job with those dollars, how we can squeeze the dollar more until it screams, and how we can serve our most needy population. We recognize that a lot of service goes on in this county, but to be honest with us, all service providers, we are not really giving the most needy the service they need. We give who come in the door sometime or who we think might need the service, but we do need to, and we believe this, and I believe the whole county needs to look very closely at why we continue to have this extreme poverty in Wayne County. And I believe, and I've said to the board, and I call it my board because I've been on it for a long time, that we are not really looking closely enough to the poorest in this community. It gets poorer and it gets poorer. But when children are born in these years of poverty and their generations in this county, that we have got to look very closely at that neediest of population and ensure that we are giving them what they need. And that's what we really focused on. We missed you at the retreat. And oh, I invite this board, and many of you have been on the wages board, uh, uh, three of you. But I invite you to come to our meetings and hear what we're talking about and what we're trying to do. Uh, we collaborate with many state agencies and national agencies, and we share our input of what we've done nationally and internationally. We speak at conferences across this United States and share with them the progress we are making. And we are a standout agency, but it does not give us a big head because we know that as long as this extreme poverty is in Wayne County, that our work has just begun. So that's what we focused on. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Edwards. Anything else, Mr. Bell? Bond finish. Okay, Mr. Aycock. Yes, sir. Uh, I think Commissioner Doherty covered pretty pretty thorough about the uh, solar facility that we had to make a decision on this morning, uh, and and he covered it pretty well. Uh, it, it it's I would very left to have not voted on it this morning, but that's not what the citizens of Wayne County elected me for, uh, and. I'm quite sure that there's some people that are probably disappointed in me in the way I voted this morning. But uh, if if something comes before us and it meets all of the criteria, all of the requirements, and everything that that the county is responsible for, uh, it is kind of like being a judge and jury. Uh, uh, did I really want to 100% vote for that facility this morning? Probably not, but I had to go by what we were instructed from council on what we could and couldn't do. Uh, and if anyone does have hard feelings towards me, I'm sorry, but uh, 
I did what I felt like needed to be done uh, with, in the position that we are in. Uh, also, uh, as mentioned about EMS truck for Southern Party County, there was one also given to uh, Wayne Community College. Me and the county manager has had a very blunt, short discussion about that. Uh, and we'll, me and him will continue to have that discussion. But uh, he knows how I feel on some issues. And also, I was on vacation for two weeks, and it could be habit forming. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Curley. <laughs> Uh, as Commissioner Daugherty spoke a while ago about the course in sales tax that we passed today of a resolution, first thing is board for passing it. Um, there is a lot of needs, educational needs out there, uh, a lot of brick and mortar that we need. The teacher supplement pay, we've got to take a close look at it. To stay competitive in this region, we really need to look at that closely. So we have some time now that we can kind of gather some facts, but we need to push the torch for that November election, encourage everybody to get out to vote for it. Another priority that we're faced with in our schools is school safety. And that's going to be a, a big major concern of all of ours, and we need to posture ourselves with that as well. And uh, the aim is that Mr. Um, Cromartie spoke about at Southern Wayne High School. We were actually at an agenda meeting that same day and we were unable to, to make the trip to Southern Wayne during the presentation of that valuable asset. But thanks to uh, Craig and Mel and Brian Smith for making that asset available to Southern, High, Southern Wayne High School. And as I understand, Richard Proctor is going to be the program lead on that. Mm -hmm. And I've been knowing Richard 30-plus um, years, and anybody knows Richard, he's well-qualified and well-seasoned. should be able to lead that program and lead it in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right, thank you. Well, a lot I would say has already been said, so I won't cover the same ground. Uh, one thing Bill Graham did ask me to remind everybody that the Purple Heart Back will, will be at the uh, Maxwell Center Friday, August the 3rd at 6 o'clock. If you want to go, let me know. Be the first one out there at the Maxwell Center. And and um, the guys that put this thing together, we're all getting old, so it's really nice to be able to have the Maxwell Center do this, and James is working very closely with them, and they're very appreciated. They really are. Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to speak to the Royalton Club last Thursday night and um, gave them a quick update on the county. Now, that wasn't really what was the highlight of that particular meeting. Um, Trooper, is it Grady, I believe? It depends on which part of the county you're in, where it's Grady or Grady. Grady. But, uh, <laughs> He's a Grady. But, um, he and several other troopers across the state are heading up this case on thing for funerals for um, um, law enforcement officers that are you know lose their lives in you know line of duty, and I was just amazed at the passion this guy has. I know the ship the sheriff's association gives money to him, but he and the other troopers they're doing this on their own. They're paying for it themselves with some donations and that kind of thing, and on their own time. Um, I just, you know, what, one of three across the country, I think, and they do all the funerals that touch all the states around North Carolina on their own, out of their own pocket. So I was just very impressed with that. And um, he, all he was really asking, he wasn't asking for money, he was asking just the publicity to get it out and let everybody know that he's doing this. He's out there on Buck Swamp Road. I think he's built a big building out there. He's got his horses and stuff out there. So he's to be very commended for doing what he's doing. And I think the news always wrote a nice article on that over the weekend. So good job, good job. Um, you've already mentioned about WCDA. The, the new office looks really good over there. And I mean, they didn't even let the dust settle over there for the election board moved in, did it? <laughs> So we got to get, you know, we'll move all that stuff around and get it all done. But anyway, um, didn't have a very busy schedule for the last couple of weeks, and I really enjoyed that for a change. And uh, I didn't go on vacation, but it's about, it was about, yeah, I could get used to it, I can tell you that. Anyway, I do know that we need to go back into closed session. It's for the same reasons as before, is that correct? Yes, so is there a motion to go in closed session? Before we leave, Mr. Chairman, I, yeah. okay. I almost missed something. I want to thank the communication department of Wayne County for showing up to take some pictures down at Southern Wayne also. I missed that. I was congratulating Mr. Merrill, but uh, our own communication department was down. Joel came down 
I took some pictures. So you must be you. from Southern Way. You, you're already pushing. It, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Get a grand. They're called grannies down there. All right, we're in a sport club session. <laughs> <laughs>